So I would like to go and look at the mass balance today. And hopefully, from what you recall, in was normally equal to out. So what that applied to was if we look at a system in our red dot here. So this was only true if we had a steady state. But we said that if we have at steady state, in was equal to out. However, it was possible to have some sort of generation or consumption in the system. And the way that that might have happened is that our in term might have been a mixture of different chemicals. And when we come in, we have a reacting unit. We then have a separation unit of sorts. We might have a purge. We might not. We have recycle. And then we come out. So if we have that sort of system, we could have had a generation term. So then we have in plus generation is equal to out. Or we could have had some chemical that's going in that's getting consumed by that reaction. So we could have said in plus generation is equal to out, as well as that consumption. So the consumption is something that's being lost. So that means that it's the same as something going out. So what I want to do with this equation today is I want to start grouping it and getting it into a better or a more mathematical form. So what I want to start by doing is I want to take this generation term and this consumption term and lump the two of these together so that we don't have two terms and just have a change. The second thing I want to do is I want to take the in and the out terms and I'm going to put them together on the same side of the equation as well. So I'll put those on the right-hand side. So in, I'm moving to the right-hand side and I'm leaving as a positive. So it will be in minus out. So that's the flow terms. That's what's coming in and out. And then the generation term and the consumption term, I'm just going to call change. Okay, so we now have a change is equal to the in minus the out. So that change is a change because it is not at steady state. So it's only because it's not at steady state. And like I've said before, steady states, I get lazy, so I'm just going to write SS for a steady state. The in term is a flow term, and the out term is also a flow term. So that's the actual streams coming in. So because of that, I'm going to call them the mass flow. So it's going to be the mass coming in minus the mass coming out. And then we have a change because it's not at steady state. That change is the change inside the system. So the generation and consumption, let's just scroll back up again, is what's happening inside our black box or our system. So that change I'm just going to call a delta and that is still a mass. So it's going to be the change in mass. The change in mass inside the system is now equal to the mass in minus the mass out. Mathematically, that change, we would rather write as a change at delta mass. And steady state, we said, refers to time. So it's the change in mass over a change in time is equal to the mass that comes in minus the mass that goes out. However, I didn't say how many streams go in or how many streams go out. So there could be multiple streams going in or multiple streams going out. So I now want to rewrite that as dm dt is equal to, and I'm going to refer to that as mass of i. So I don't know whether it's in or out yet, and we're going to refer to that, and that's a summation term that I've drawn right at the body there. For i is equal to 1 to i is equal to n. For i is equal to a stream where i is going to be positive if it's an incoming stream and i is going to be negative if it's an outgoing stream. So that's just simply the in versus the out. So writing that neatly, from now on, if we refer to a mass balance, please can you use dm dt is equal to the sum for m i, for i is equal to 1 to n, as our one and only form of the mass balance. So now if we are looking at how to use this equation in any of our examples, we are always going to start with dm dt is equal to the sum for i is equal to 1 to n, so n is the number of streams of m i. 
So the first question we want to know is, is the system at steady state or not? If this is at steady state, the first thing that is going to happen is that that is going to mean that dm dt is equal to zero because of steady state, and we are going to be left with zero is equal to the summation term on the right hand side. The next thing to check is how many streams are there? Is it one, two, three, four, five? So you're going to have stream one, stream two, stream three, four, five, and onwards. And if there are streams coming in, it's going to be plus. And if there are streams going out, it is then going to be minus. If you are not at steady state, so the other option is then we're going to have dm dt is equal to the sum for i is equal to 1 to n for the mi term. If you are not at steady state, so that means that you might have, like we had in that one example of ink flowing into a bath or ink in the bath and the water flowing in, so the concentration of ink changes, this first term does not disappear. So you have to leave that term in. So you leave that as dm dt. And then the same thing happens on the right. How many terms are going in? Let's just say there are only two. So there's one going in and one going out. And again, you use a positive or a negative sign to indicate what goes in versus what goes out.